Welcome back, everyone. We are telling another fabulous story today. We're going to have so much fun with this one. Um, this is a new author to me. I have not met Linda Hansen before. We just met today. And I'm really, really excited to share her story with you because it's a really beautiful story and it's got some great artwork. Um, Linda is the author of Otto the Otter a big surprise that's the name of the book and she's also the illustrator too so um you gotta if you get a chance to check out this book really do that because the art is spectacular linda welcome i'm so glad you're here with us today i am so glad to be here thank you for inviting me it's gonna be fun so linda hansen grew up in st louis and currently lives in florida she works in watercolors and acrylics her style is often filled with bold color, and though her work is not abstract, it is often thought of as being like the work done by, is that Fauve? Fauve. Fauve. Um, office uh, Artists of Paris, and later after the show, I'm going to Google that so I can learn more about it. Linda's work um background is diverse but for 25 years she was the executive director of a nonprofit. during this time linda created a book for the nonprofit called beauty is it is a book about self-esteem urged to attempt a new journey by a good friend and neighbor linda realized she could combine her love of painting with another new adventure in life that is when linda decided to write and illustrate her first children's picture book Otto the Otter, a big surprise. Linda has a lifelong love of animals. And currently, Linda and her husband own two dogs, whom they refer to lovingly as their girls. Since uh, moving to Florida, Linda has helped save a great gray heron. And in Gaina? Is that how you And Hinga. And Hinga. And Hinga. OK. Another thing I'm going to Google when we're done here. A snowy egret and a grackle nestling. Recently, they rescued a lost dog and found him a loving home. Again, welcome, Linda. I'm so glad to have you. You have such a great background, especially in helping animals. So I'm really grateful that you're here today. Well, it, it is a true joy to be with you. And animals are a passion. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I couldn't agree more. Um, Tell us a little bit about this story. Could you read the back matter synopsis or just give us an idea of the story before you read it to us? Well, it is a true story um, about a North American river otter. And he visited this small pond almost every day. And then I'll keep the rest of it for the story. That's excellent. I love that. Um, so those of you who have young children, please gather them around your podcast radio, or if you're watching on YouTube, gather them around the TV, put it on the big screen, because you're going to want to see this beautiful um, artwork that uh, Linda did for this book. When you are ready, Linda, please take the microphone and read aloud. I'm ready. Okay. Otto the Otter, a big surprise. Otto the Otter has been visiting a small pond for a long time. The people who live in the gray house near the pond gave him his name. It is always a wonderful surprise when they see him. Otto doesn't come every day, but he does come often to swim, play, and eat. Otto stays at the pond for a few hours and then travels from the pond through a creek to another pond nearby. Otters travel in a six mile area and the people's pond is just one of the places he visits. Otto is a North American river otter and he lives in freshwater. River otters are different from sea otters who live in the salty water of the Pacific Ocean. Otters sleep near water in a variety of places on land, both above ground and in underwater de underground dens. That's one of the girls. Otto leaves the pond at night. The people in the gray house don't know where he goes. 
Sometimes they see him leave as he squeezes through the fence on the other side of the pond. The people worry about Otto if they don't see him for a long time. Once he stayed away all winter and showed up again in the spring with a very big surprise. Otto turned out not to be Otto. Otto is a girl. How did the people realize that Otto is a girl? Otto came to the pond with two babies. The people changed the otter's name to Opal. Otter babies are called pups. Before they are born, the mother creates a quiet den where they will be born and kept safe. The pups spend their first month there. They can't see because their eyes are not open yet, but their mom watches over them. As the pups grow, the small pond near the gray house provides a safe place for them. The first few weeks that Opal brought them to the pond, they stayed all day. Their mom always keeps them close and looks after them. The people in the gray house never get tired of watching them. When the pups were about two months old, Opal started to teach them how to swim. The pups were not born knowing how to swim. Their mom also had to teach them how to look for food under the water. Otters eat fish, frogs, crayfish, turtles, and insects. They have long whiskers, which help them find their food in dark or cloudy water. They also have special eyelids, which allow them to keep their eyes open to see while swimming under the water. Otto's, otters close their ears and noses, which allows them to swim under the water for almost eight minutes. Sometimes the otters disappear under the water, but the people can see where they are by the bubbles that rise to the surface. The pups often leave the pond to play on the grass, clean themselves and nurse from opal. Mother otters continue to cuddle and nurse their pups for 14 weeks. As the pups continue to grow, they leave Opal's side and swim around the pond so they can explore and play on their own. Opal watches them very closely and squeaks loudly to show them her displeasure when they get too far away. There are two wooden rafts in the floating, in the, I'm sorry, there are two wooden rafts floating in the small island in the small pond. The people who live in the gray house call them turtle islands. During the heat of the day, the turtles which live in the pond like to climb on the rafts and enjoy the warmth of the sun. The pups love to play on the turtle islands too. When the pups are on the raft, the turtles leave to find another place to enjoy the sun. The people in the gray house love to watch the otters swim. Otters have long, flat, wide tails that they use just like a rudder on a boat. Their tail helps them steer and also helps them swim fast. Adult otters are very strong and can swim six to seven miles per hour while in the water and can run as fast as 15 miles per hour on the land. The people watch as time passes and the pups continue to grow. Opal moves them from the safety of the pond more often and takes them to other places. Sometimes they are gone for several days. Now when they come, they no longer stay very long. 
their lives have become busier as they travel from pond to pond. The people in the gray house don't know how long or how often they will get to see Opal and her pups. Otter pups usually stay with their mother until they are a year old. The people hope they will get to see them for a long time and watch them grow. If the people in the gray house are lucky, maybe Opal will show up with a new litter of pups one day. The end. That was lovely. I love the artwork in this book. It's so beautiful. You did such a tremendous job with the illustrations. Thank you so very much. And I love that this book is, um, it's a true story of an otter family that lives in the pond near your house. I'm the person in the gray house. <laughs> <laughs> I love that this is um, a real story that young people can enjoy. What was your favorite part about creating this book? For me, it was the challenge of doing something new that I had never done before. So um, was that, was it difficult for you to take on that challenge or did you see it in um, an adventurous spirited way? Both. It was difficult at times, but mostly for me, it was the adventure of doing a new journey. Um, I'm, I'm not young. I'm not a young mom's age. Children, I'm not your mommy's age. I'm your grandma's age. <laughs> Maybe even your great grandma's age. So this is a wonderful opportunity for children to learn that even grandmas can try new things and have fun. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that is what it has been for me. That's wonderful. I am so glad that you came to read for us. And I know that you told me earlier that you're writing a second book. Will you come back and read that to us when it's ready? I would be thrilled and honored to do so. Wonderful. For anyone who's interested in learning more about Linda and Otto Opal, the otter, um, check out the show notes and you'll see links there to Linda's website and also to find the book. Linda, thanks again for joining us today. I really enjoyed having you on the program. It has been my honor. Thank you. Bye-bye.